following Linda's death, music activities helped provide some structure and stability for the family. Wallace kept his sons focused on the violin above all else. My dad explained to me that I would be, I wouldn't, I'd be an original. I wouldn't be like the other kids outside playing basketball or baseball or something. You have an option. You can work like the devil from the age of five until you're 18 and play from the time you're 18 until the time you're 80. Or you can play from the age of five all the way to 18 and work like the devil from the age of 18 until you're 80. Which would be better for you? Anybody in his right mind can see the difference. So my boys elect to work like the devil from 5 to 18. And it's not hurting them at all. You have to give up when you're little playing ball and, and little league baseball teams. I always wanted to be on that. Uh, when I was at the time, um, yeah, there were a lot of sacrifices, but it pays off in the future. You have to study your schoolwork, or you're going to flunk out of school. You have to practice your violin three hours a day, a minimum, minimum, if you're going to compete with the big boys later on. Now, if that takes all your time, and we have to leave play out, or leave it to be timed to a minimal, which one would you cut out? You have to cut out the play. And he'd be the first one to tell you, no, they don't have time to throw the ball, as he would say it. That's the kind of inflection he probably would do. He didn't, we don't have time to throw the ball. And uh, he wants them busy. Uh, you can throw the ball after you're, after you're set in life. Uh, I think that's how he feels. Right now, prepare for what life has. I still have to agree with that, too. If you spend your time as a kid, being a kid, I couldn't see. If I had done that, I would probably still be a kid. You know, instead, I'm, I'm holding my own as a musician amongst some of the best musicians now. Second place is Alex DePew. With their dedication, all of the brothers did well in area fiddle contests and violin competitions. Among the contestants were Zach, Jason, and Alex DePew of Bowling Green. And although all of them loved the joy of competition, Zach had an ulterior motive for being there. I just came here to beat my brothers. <laughs> we do a lot of family concerts together. And um, we, we uh, do practice together, but we, we usually practice by ourselves a lot, too. How often do you practice so many hours a day? Three hours a day. It's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah. Don't you think so? I don't practice three hours. Who practices? The oldest of the three contestants, 14-year-old Alex, will take his skills to Carnegie Hall in November. With the violin and schoolwork keeping them busy, and Wallace Sr. working full-time, there was little time for anything else around the house. It was a mess, but it was a funny mess because there were violins playing in all corners of the room and there were five men that lived in that house and they lived like five men. They didn't have time to clean up. It was hectic at the Depew household. We had five different guys doing their laundry at different times, so the thing was probably fighting for its life. I'm talking about the washing machine. No, please, not again, not again. I would come in and I would look at it and i say, Wallace, why don't you take some time to clean this up? We're going to do that right now. Jason, get in here and clean up this room. Well, if you could have brought a bulldozer in, it would have helped him. He would have gotten done in an hour, I think. Everyone was cooking their food at different times. We did not have meals together <laughs> that often. If we did, it was because we were invited to, to some good soul's house to have dinner. The worst thing about it was not the physical labor and all the uh, emotional stress. The biggest disadvantage was it was as though they spoke a different language. I could not converse with them on any given subject. Now, it was like grunt and point. Uh, go wash the dishes. Uh, go make the bed. Uh, go shine your shoes. And those sentences they can understand. But if I want to talk about 
poetry or great literature or any of the things that interest me, they don't know the words. The boys all love girls now. Well, half of them do. Half of them hate them and half of them love them. So those that love them are able to go out on dates and have a nice time, whatever. Make, make that three-fourths. Oh, gee, New Jason, one. our ep to a group <laughs> Well, Zach's still loyal. Zach's still. Do you want to see me kiss Zach with lipstick on? Hold him. Ah, Hold him oh. for me. Today, Wallace DePew is remarried to Elaine Markopoulos, a Toledo school teacher, and she has helped restore balance between violin and home. Well, the impact was instant and dramatic. I mean, you went from cleaning the rooms out with a shovel and a bulldozer to an immaculate person. I mean, you went from one extreme to the other. That's great because, you know, you perform one night and there are lots of people, and, <laughs> and then the next day you wash the toilet. <laughs> That's great, though. It's humbling. Far beyond the playing of the violin, they must be people of good character. Character is, is what makes a person uh, what he is. It's something which uh, is brought out by a person's responses, um, mode of thinking, uh, actions. That comes beyond anything else, whether it be the violin or whether it be uh, any other field of endeavor. Wallace Sr. continues to work with his younger sons as intensely as ever. Driving. No, no. You're not going to get off the hook. No, no. Scolding. Praising. He can stand over them, but they have to have the commitment inside. And no matter how much he stands over them, if they don't have the commitment inside to achieve and to improve, they're not going to improve. He says, if you want to quit, that, that's fine with him. That, that has never entered my mind in doing that. But he says, if that's really what you want to do, if you, if you, can't, if you don't consider practicing what you want to do, then don't do it by all means. Do something else. Quitting the violin would ruin his dream of having four sons playing the violin. And this is what I do, is for my dad. Everything I do is for my dad because he started me and this is what he wanted. I would always love to play the violin. I would love to become not exactly world renowned. You know, I'm not looking for fame. I don't want to be, become famous. That's secondary to, to anything, to, to my first first thing that I want to do is, is just be able to go out on stage and make a message to an audience, you know, and hopefully they'll get my message. I just want to keep on playing and keep on developing, you know, my, my repertoire and performing my repertoire and, and, um, and just having fun with it. In 1993, the DePew family musicians found themselves at a musical crossroad. Wallace Jr. and Alex no longer lived at home, and concerts were becoming more like small family reunions. On stage, there was no longer a father coaxing four young boys. Now four men stood there instead. We're in the process of letting Dad know that those days are gone and that the time that, and the times that he used to come out and introduce us as our, these, this, these are my, my child geniuses that, that play the violin, they're prodigies or whatever he decides he wanted to call them. It's no longer like that. Now we're, we're pretty much big boys and, and we have to hold our own as far as the musical aspect and as far as an entertainment group. We, we're not just cute little kids anymore. And so maybe a little more pressure along with that. But if I had to go handpick the musicians myself to form a group, I would probably pick my brothers. Bye and bye. Yes, bye and bye.
right note. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. We both hear it. See, the boys are getting older. They're getting, they're getting smarter. They, they have rationale uh, now to argue with their dad. He can't just t say something now and expect them just to go away. They won't go away. They're in his face all the time. If they disagree, they let him know. And then in the, second half, the other boys have ideas, too, and they accuse me of being dictatorial, and they accuse me of being like Adolf Hitler or Attila the Hun. And I always tell them, when you get your family, then you will rule, and you will do it however you wish. But right now, this is my family, and it's my turn. Now do it my way, and let's not argue. Okay, come here. Wally is well aware that uh, the boys can do it. It's just a matter of, you know, he is still there. Um, he enjoys it also. Um, these are his sons. He's extremely proud of them. Thank you.